Hi, welcome to part one of Android Games Programming using BASIC for Android. This is going to be a multi-part tutorial series, um, all on YouTube, hopefully updated once a week or so, um, or less. And we'll be covering the basics of how to write 2D games using BASIC for Android and the Game View library, uh, which the creator of BASIC for Android released uh, a few months ago. In tutorial 1 we're just going to look at how to display a image on the screen and move that image around smoothly. Uh, you'll be able to set how many frames per second it's moving around and control where the image is and how it, you know, how it moves. So I'll explain how that works and then talk about what we'll do in future tutorials. Okay, so the program's laid out if you've watched watched any of my other basic for Android tutorials with the same functions so you have your process globals to declare any variables you can access anywhere in the program your globals which will just be declared for this activity we're using an activity is just the screen that you're working on at the time and then activity create which will run when it first runs the program and then we're going to use timers in this. I haven't talked about timers before, but basically a timer is literally that. It's something that ticks every so often, however often you set the interval to be. And every time the timer ticks, it runs the timer tick function. So in this case, this is where it will update where the object is on the screen. And then redraw the view to update the animation. Uh, we then have activity resume for when it first um, starts the activity or when you come out and go back in again and you have activity pause this is for when the user hits the home key to go back to their launcher or they take a phone call or something like that and that's what it does when it pauses the application so starting from the beginning we're going to declare an object called ship to be our bitmap data this literally means that it's going to create an object in memory to store a picture from a file and the file can be anything from a bitmap to a JPEG a PNG a GIF image whatever image format uh, your phone supports or Android supports which is pretty much those four formats maybe a few others I'm not aware of uh, I mentioned we're going to have a timer so we're going to specify timer 1 as being a timer object and then later we initialize that and tell it how often to tick size is the size of our graphic that we're loading so we're going to set the size to be 50 and it's a square graphic we're going to have and that basically means it's 50 pixels per side we're going to we're going to set my and m x as integers this is how much it moves on x and how much it moves on y per frame so every time it updates the screen it will move the object by mx and my to update the x and y coordinates of the object so just remembering x and y coordinates are literally like coordinates on a map x is how far across the screen and y is how far down the screen starting at zero at the top and working up as it goes down so we then move on to our globals and we're declaring something called gv as game view Views on Android, if you remember, are things like labels and that sort of stuff. So if I go into the designer, click on add view, I have ch buttons, checkboxes, text, images, um, lists, that sort of thing. So game view is a custom view developed by the basic for Android developer, um, which acts a bit like a panel or a like a canvas to work on for your game. So you create a game view object and then we will then add um, images to that object. So it then moves on to what it does when it first runs the program. So when you first run the program, Android passes it as this variable called first time, which is a true or false uh, Boolean variable. So if it's true, that means it's the first time it's run this activity since you clicked on it on the launcher on your phone or your tablet. Um, obviously if you just come out and come back in again then it's not the first time you don't want it to reload everything. So what we do is we say if it's the first time then our ship object set the bitmap to load the bitmap from ship PNG and that's part of our file dire assets. When you add files in basic app for Android using the files tab here at the bottom right of the screen you'd click on add files and then you search for your file on your PC and then add it. Once you add it, 
it then comes up in the list of files here at the top right so we have ship.png that then becomes part of the Dyer assets set of files and we can select it here and assign it to the ship bitmap object. We're then going to specify the destination rectangle for this ship object so we initialize this destination rectangle by specifying the coordinates that it's going to go on to. So we're going to say it's going to be this is x, y for the top left of the object and then for the bottom right of the object it's x and y again um, for a second set of coordinates. So we're going to say that the top left of the object is 100 density independent pixels by 100 density independent pixels so that's 100 pixels across by 100 pixels down and then the bottom right corner of it is the same plus the size of the actual side of the object itself. So you'll see there if I um, type anything in here it will bring up that so you've got the left, top, right and bottom. So you just have to think that you're drawing it out uh, a square on a page and that's the coordinates of each of the corners. Um, we then initialize our timer which is going to tick however often we want it to to run this game. So we initialize it by giving it a name and then a variable. And that variable is an interval which is just a number. So once a second would be a thousand because this is an interval in milliseconds. There's one thousand milliseconds in a second. So if I'm saying 50 then just using a calculator here if we say 1000 over 50 means that I'm going to run at 20 frames a second. So if I wanted my game to run at 30 frames a second I would do 1000 over 30 which means I would set my timer to be 33 um, milliseconds and that's how it works. So this is going to run at 20 frames a second. Obviously if you change the speed of your timer um, then things are going to move faster or slower in your game so when you're moving objects around the screen you have to allow for how fast your timer is so maybe you want something to tie in with the timer speed so the game always runs at the same rate no matter how smooth it's running. We're then going to specify our MX and MY values. If you remember this is how much it moves on X by how much it moves on Y. So we're going to say each frame move 5 pixels or density independent pixels which means that it will be the same distance no matter what the screen on the device is because obviously different Android phones and tablets have different screen sizes. This will move by 5 pixels on X and 5 pixels on Y. We're then going to initialize our game view object so that we can use it and then we're going to add that game view view to our activity and the activity is just a screen that you're working on at the time. So obviously an application can have multiple activities typically your game will have one activity maybe two if you have one for a menu and then one for the game. So we're going to add it to our view we're going to add activity add view game view which is our object 0 0 is the top left of the screen and we want it to stretch out to the bottom right of the screen so we're 100% X and 100% Y of the screen that just specifies that it's going to cover the entire screen. Uh, obviously if you just wanted to cover the top half of the screen then you could put 50% Y and then the bottom half of the screen you could put normal regular Android views onto, it doesn't matter. Okay so we're going to add the ship bitmap to the game view view now and I mentioned before the game view view is simply like a canvas that you can draw onto so we have our ship bitmap object so if we call gv.bitmapsData add ship, that's going to assign the ship to the game view object. Now basic for Android already knows where on this canvas to put the ship because we specified the coordinates for it here, where we specified where on the canvas to put it. So that's going to assign it there and that's our game um, all set up. Next thing then is for it to update and actually move this object around on the screen. So this happens when timer one ticks. So we have a sub function called timer one tick. And all we're going to do is have something to bounce the ship off the walls of the screen if the ship moves too far to the right or left or up down. So we're going to say, okay, if the right hand side of the ship is more than 99% of how wide the screen is, then MX is going to reverse position. ABS takes the absolute value of MX, so if MX is minus 1, it becomes 1. This times it by minus 1 and keeps it as minus 1. But if it's going right, then MX is going to be 
uh, 5 in this case so it would be minus 1 times 5 which is going to give it minus 5 which means that mx becomes minus 5 instead of 5 and it reverses direction same goes for all of these other things here if that's confusing so so in the comments I'll try and explain it in a, in a better way we're then going to update the uh, location of the ship because we've updated how the ship's going to move and then we want to add those movement amounts onto where the ship actually is so we're going to move the left hand side and top side of the ship object by mx and my and then simply update the right and bottom side using where the left and top side now is plus the size of the ship so that's how we're going to move our ship around on the screen um, you could write a function to make this much simpler um, but in this case we're just going to use four lines in the future I'll have a sub function to make it simpler to move objects around uh, we're then going to redraw the game view object so this is done using game view dot invalidate there's several functions in the game view object you can use so you can specify the background for the object you've got bitmaps data we looked at earlier um, to add in more bitmaps we can enable it, disable it, we can invalidate it we can check if it's hardware set accelerated the thing to remember with this is this will run faster if you're running Android 3.0 or upwards so if you're running an older Android tablet on 3.0 if you're running a newer Android phone or tablet on Android 4 onwards it will always be hardware accelerated or at least it should be if your phone has a graphics processor um, installed and that will mean it will run much smoother you can still write games for older Android phones using this but they won't run as smooth because of not having hardware acceleration and then you'd have to invest in learning OpenGL which is much much harder and more complicated than doing this so we're focusing on this because it's a much simpler way of doing graphics on Android and using this sort of thing there's no reason you couldn't write a game like Angry Birds or Cut the Rope using basic for Android and the game view library and it would be much quicker and simpler than learning OpenGL OK, so we then have activity resume to enable the timer and activity pause to disable our timer to stop the actual program running. So let's see what this looks like when I actually run it. So I've got my Android emulator running. To start up your Android emulator, just remember to go into Tools, Run AVD Manager, and then start up the, app, the device. So I've got an Intel-based Android 4 device. Um, because that will take advantage of my PC and be able to run the emulator a little faster so I've got my emulator here I'm just going to hit play or run on Android for basic basic for Android and it's going to run that package on the emulator so it installs the file onto the device and runs it so if I go to my emulator now I'll see that it will switch and run our program so we have our object here bouncing around the screen quite smoothly um, it doesn't look that smooth on the video because the video doesn't record that smooth basically um, I could use another program and make it run smoother easiest way to do it is just to download this yourself and run it on your own basic for Android okay in the future I'm going to be looking at how to control objects yourself and we'll work towards making a simple Space Invaders game and then also some other game ideas in future. Um, I'll also be doing a basic how to write Tetris, that sort of thing, using basic for Android and probably mostly using the uh, game view library to enable us to do smooth animation. Okay, and see you next time.